I captured something so horrific, so terrifying. I wasn't even sure if the world was ready for something like this, but I just need to get it off my chest. Bruh. So this was, I don't know, about 20 hours into our road trip, and we should have been at this point at about the 14 hour mark, but we ended up being in two massive traffic halts because we drove through 20 hours of straight inclement weather and it was absolutely horrifying. Our first and most memorable stop, I could argue, is here, Peralta Trails. I'm showing this to like friends and family, so you wanna put it away, dude? I'm just messing with them. We hiked in four hours of a blizzard and even more hours of <laughs> thunderstorms here in the desert of Arizona. Yes, it's it doesn't a video. make any sense. The chances were 0% of it ever happening. But we hiked in a blizzard and a thunderstorm for 35 miles. Well, the bad weather part was about 25 miles of it. But still, I don't suggest it. This is Climbing Weaver's Needle. It was that that very tall mountain that you saw in the picture on the right side. Clayton punched a yucca, which is this very Shows sharp plant, gorgeous. near the top of this on the way down, and I had to make a makeshift bandage for him since he was bleeding out everywhere. <laughs> the weather is crazy. The desert is one of the most humbling areas you can ever hike, ever do any outdoor activities, anything at. Because you can go from sunny, where you're getting sunburn at 75 degrees, and then drops legitimately 40, 50 degrees. And you're shivering and, like, fighting for life at night. We weren't shivering that bad. Well, this tent was absolutely horrible. It was a last second buy. We wanted a two-man, because it was less, you know, weight to carry. And we ended up accidentally buying a garbage bag with two poles. That's pretty much the equivalent. And that big, tall, pointy thing. That's what we climbed. It was a it was a crazy hike, thousand feet incline. It was a toughie. That was like a real first push. And this is our campsite. We're wrapping up about twelve miles in, about a thirty-five. This is about twenty miles in, maybe. I think so. Like around twenty miles in, we are not supposed to be here. <laughs> We were supposed to take a right about two miles back, and we will soon realize that in the next half mile up here. We got screwed. It hurt. And this is about 20 seconds before the blizzard started. I did not get any footage of it because I did not want my $1,200 camera out in the weather. I think you understand. This hike was also memorable, not because of the inclement weather or how f far we pushed ourselves to the limit. But this was our farthest day hike that we had across the entire trip. We did 25 miles in one day. And that is hard at this time of year because the sun goes, haven't even started. comes up later and goes down <laughs> earlier. So you have less time in the day to get these hikes done. And we're not messing with any night hiking right now. So we got 25 miles done. Uh, over 4,000 feet of elevation change. It was a real doozy. And we saw these little, like, Spear shoots up. along the whole trip. <laughs> along the whole, whole hike. And we were losing our sanity. Our legs were hurting. We needed a break. And the smart one of us, too. Clayton. He, he, <laughs> smart one of us, too. He, uh... Yeah. Killed it. He went down it. I thought he was gonna die. You guys gonna be easier? I was gonna take his knife. He had a nice knife. <laughs> I was just gonna leave the rest of them. I'm just kidding, bud. Bro, that's fun, do it. No. This is at the top of that hike. I guess you could call it top. We ended up just hiking the entire ridge line. We once again took a wrong turn and instead of going to the peak of something, we did a much longer hike with much more elevation gain and you know harder all around, you know, whoop-de-doo, look at us go. 
But this is LA. This is Los Angeles. Beautiful town. Everyone always hears about town. I call it a town. <laughs> this is the place where MASH, if you know anything about MASH, this is where the entire show was filmed. Malibu Creek State Park. We didn't even know that. We were just hiking and we ran across it. What's crazy is that this area, so these are like one of the few props that is like that have like survived the weather. Uh, it's because it was shot what decades ago. This hike was pretty hard and it went for miles. Like we that took 12 miles to get there. So they had to have lived out there when they recorded that entire show. This is farther into that hike. Much farther up. Much, much farther up. Probably about 3,000 feet farther up. Well, 2,000 feet. And it went... It dropped temperature. It, it had to have been like a feel like of 30 degrees. We were shaking in our shoes. We were so cold. And we honestly probably shouldn't have free climbed this right here. But we did. Because, you know, you only live once. Okay. Don't quote me on that, please. This is a very dumb saying. But I, I didn't mute... The, the wind all the way because I wanted you to know how bad it was we were those rocks were pretty much just water they were so wet we were slipping everywhere and the wind picked up from 10 to like 35 miles per hour and we were in a cloud that's like what it's like to be in a cloud 100% humidity a little farther up this is one on one of our off days we always play two disc golf courses on our off days and it was absolutely gorgeous Won't forget it. It's a hard course. Should go play it though. I love it. Top of the world hole. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, stunning, immaculate. One of a kind. Uh, there's not really any water hazard though. One of the reasons why I wanted to travel along the coast of California to do my hiking was so that I could find out where I wanted to live. I'm a marine biologist, so. I'm going to live in California, that's where I want to do the majority of my work at. And I wanted to find somewhere that, you know, I really liked. And this is it. Uh, it's CARP. That's what the locals call it. Carpentaria. I did not pronounce that right. Don't ask me how to pronounce it because I don't know how to pronounce it. Because <laughs> everyone just called it CARP. I think it's because it's a rock. Once it's your skin, I feel like you'll be... <laughs> oh, it grabbed me! Beautiful oh, coastal waters. Oh, it grabbed me! We went out and... Uh, oh. Hiked in the low tide. You, you know, that is also a picture of the night night. <laughs> found starfish. Found amazing, cool little critters. Ocean's a one of a kind thing. Yeah. You know what? Not everyone is perfect. I, as well, am not perfect. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not very close to perfect at all. Well, I thought this dude was getting attacked by these geese, uh, but he's not. He voluntarily got out. And he was feeding Yo, let's go out here. The geese. This, even though we have done hikes where we burned 6,000 calories in one hike, we hiked without breaks for nine and a half hours. We went through the hardest weather conditions that this world had to give us. Really content. And yet this was probably the hardest day. So, huh? Let me tell you why. See that sweatshirt Clay's wearing? He has that little pocket in the front. Little kangaroo pocket, right? One in 50 waves. That one in 50 wave that I just mentioned hit us earlier while we were in the water. We were playing catch, and Clayton is absolutely horrible. And he threw this disc that I've had for seven years, eight years, into the water. And I was like, Clayton, you have, you have no shoes. I have shoes on. Get in the water and grab it. He goes, okay, I'll go get it. Runs in, and the disc gets sucked out to sea. And he's like, oh, no, I'll get it. I, I promise, I promise. So he runs out into the ocean, and that one in 50 wave that we were just talking about, smacks him and puts him like on his tippy toes and he starts falling and I'm like oh I'm laughing so hard I'm dying right now this dude's absolutely soaked and he's trying to not even get his shorts wet and he starts screaming and I'm like dude the water's not that bad he goes no my phone I lost my phone he's like he starts screaming like that I'm like oh my god and the wave came smacked him silly took the phone out of his pocket and we spent probably about six hours looking for that phone and you know, we knew at a certain point we weren't going to find it. But, I don't know. It, it was really nice. He needed it. I needed it. I don't, I don't know if I really needed it. <laughs> but it was, it was nice just to walk along the shore. So, luckily, all of the pictures that he took and all of those memories, he 
like kind of sent to friends and they saved the picture so he didn't really lose much except for you know a phone <laughs> and now this point i'm going solo no one is with me and it's just me myself and i clayton got a one-way flight back to the midwest he had some family problems that he, ne he needed to attend to and i, I can't hold him. so i've been a farewell he's doing great with his life one of a kind kid but here i am all alone and i can't help myself so i have to stop at every single coastal state park because <laughs> it's just gorgeous look at this so these little birdie dudes i don't know the names if anyone wants to let me know what the birds names are i would greatly appreciate it i think they're like sandpipers of some sort one of my favorite animals they're just adorable they can stand on one leg that's how they sleep and they play with these with these waves so the water's charging back right now because the tides below. and the these birds run up to that little wall that gets me look at, look. look at the little footsteps these guys have look how tiny those are <laughs> and uh the birds go all the way to the edge and then right there. it's, it's cute this is probably the sketchiest free climb i had um, all of the trip i went probably 50 60 feet farther down and then realized I didn't want to die so I came back up I was wearing the wrong shoes I needed to though I you can't even put words to what it's what it feels like to be in an area like that shout out to Charlie uh, I was gonna bring this sign for you I think I may have showed you a picture of it but this is where it is this is, I actually found it way over at the edge of that bluff where you saw me free climbing and I dragged it like a mile and I realized the joke wasn't worth it so I left it. <laughs> I was going to drive that 40 hours in my car. I drive a Prius. That would not have fit. So this this hike was absolutely amazing. This was I'm, I'm maybe 20 minutes away from where I was just at. I was above the clouds. All those clouds you saw, Pacific Ocean underneath it. Gorgeous. I had some of the coolest experiences in this in this state park, though. It's in Northern California. I guess it, you call it NorCal. It's NorCal. Santa Cruz. And this was where I found the Advocate Tree. Uh, and it was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in my life. One of the most humbling things I've ever witnessed in nature. And you'll see it soon. I try to give these redwoods, you know, a, a better scale with my hand but I you can't even do that like it, it's still so hard to show you what it's like to be near these massive historic trees like everyone is like over 200 years old that's that's insane almost it's almost impossible to show you what it's like so this is the advocate tree the legendary advocate tree that went down in a winter storm of 2017 that the advocate tree is estimated to be at around 1,017 years old. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna say that again to you, 1,017 years old. Right now I'm walking across a tree that is a thousand that was 1,017 years old. And it stood and thrived for that long. This tree has seen like the beginning, not the beginning, but a very big part of like human Humans evolving. We weren't even contemplating settling on North America at that point. Not even close. Like Native Americans were barely a thing. Absolutely amazing. It's so humbling to be here and to think that it only went down two years ago and I missed it by that little. Shout out to Kyle and Angela. Thank you so much. For letting me stay. I hope you guys see this video. Your cat's kind of cute. Wow, he likes disc golf. He's, he's a cool guy. I think she likes disc golf too. She's a cool girl. <laughs> I really appreciate all of you for sticking along this far, if you have, for some godforsaken reason, <laughs> and for going on this journey with me. I had a blast. Now, I'll never forget any of it. Big shout out to Clayton S. I will not give away your last name so people won't stalk you. You're welcome, Clay. And Stevie, even though Stevie died uh, almost immediately into the trip. 
So props, props, props for not dying from strep. Yeah? yeah? Thank you so much for watching. Do what Joe Mama says, which is me, and go subscribe to this. It's mine. My ass. Bye.